Hey everyone, this is Christian with Encourage, and in this video, I'll be showcasing how you can turn your old underwater GoPro JPEGs into breathtaking photos in Adobe Lightroom. Now, the purpose of this video is not to just teach you by rote, but to share with you just how far you can go with editing a murky old JPEG taken on a GoPro Hero 3. You're not limited by your equipment. Use this video to learn the creative process and then apply that to your own images. There's lots of trial and error, but that's what learning is. Hey, and we'd love to see the result of your learning, so feel free to tweet us at Encourage your before and after images. All right, let's get started. All right, so once we've imported all of our GoPro images, it's time to choose your favorite ones. Now, before you even start editing, actually, I'd, I'd suggest you find a photo you want to be inspired by. I really like these shots by Nolan Omura because I, I love how he plays with the lighting, the contrast um, underwater when he's in these different environments such as sea caves. Um, it really gives the photo a focused look while also adding a mysterious element with the contrast of the light and darkness. Now that we've gotten some creative direction using our inspiration photos, it's time to get into the editing. First off, let's start off with the crop. Now, centering your photo with the subject in the middle is fine, but with this shot, I really wanted to capture the motion of the image. So I put my subject at the bottom left intersection, so our eye is drawn in a downward diagonal direction. And hey, if you're wanting to post this on Instagram, feel free to slap a 4x5 crop. Okay, so I'm not going to be focusing on colors just yet with this edit. I want to make sure that all the exposure and contrast is revealed in the image first. So let's start with that. Here, you can use the Basics tab as well as the Tone Curve um, to do these adjustments. You can see that I immediately bring in more contrast by lowering the exposure and just bumping up the contrast and clarity sliders. With the Tone Curve, I'm not just adding random points, but I'm utilizing the Region sliders. This helps bring in more detail to the once murky picture. Um, and if you can't find these sliders, click the button in the bottom right hand corner and they'll show up. Now as you can see, I start playing around with the temperature and this is the reason why I don't edit for colors in this initial image just yet. The temperature is actually a good way to help bring in more detail in the shadows and highlights. Uh, so you'll see that I play around with these sliders until I see something I like. Alright, so now onto the HSL tab. And here we really only have aquas and blues, so I'm just going to focus on that. With the same principle applied with the temperature sliders, we're adjusting the hue, saturation, and luminosity with a focus on the exposure. And here the luminosity tab is really awesome because I can selectively bring up the aquas without targeting much of the blues. Going into the detail tab, I've added some sharpening up to around 70 to 80 to really bring out those small little details and bubbles you see in the top half of the image. I don't add too much noise reduction because this actually takes away some of those details that I want to see with this image. Here I'm adding a little vignetting for a better focus on our subject. And you'll notice that I don't use the dehaze slider for now. I think the dehaze slider is very useful in focused editing um, with the radio or gradient tools, not necessarily for the overall picture, so I'll leave that to zero. Now I'm just seeing if I want to make any other fine adjustments before I export and re-import the photo. You'll see that I come down to the lens correction tab and this is where it actually gets fun with GoPro images. I really want to dramatize the photo and I'm going to use the distortion to achieve that. I personally feel like my subject is too big in the picture and I want to add some contrast and scale. So here you can just see me playing around with that. Alright, now to the gradient tool. Now my creative direction is to really emphasize the light coming from the top right corner. So I'm going to give this photo a partial vignetting on all corners except for the top right. I really want to bring out the contrast with the lighting so I'm really cranking the sliders so that it's mostly black. Uh, this is where it's fun to play around with the edits because you can really create a different lighting situation that you didn't necessarily have in the original photo. This gradient will be revealing the light coming from the top right corner and I'm really trying to bring more detail and contrast um, between the fish and the sea floor because they kind of get lost in that mix. 
Now with this radio tool, I'm going to be finishing up that partial vignetting in the bottom right hand corner to really draw the eye toward the subject and the fish. With this gradient, I'm bringing out more of the shape of the image um, with the light. Usually I'll just crank out the sliders on both ends until I find a nice medium. And this is where the trial and error part just comes into practice and trusting what you feel is right. With this gradient, I'm helping to curve the partial vignetting more and more um, and just round that off in the bottom left hand corner. All right, so we've gotten the main lighting adjustments down. Um, now, what I'm actually going to do is make a second copy of this photo. Um, and because it's a JPEG, I'm not really worried about losing any detail. Um, so what I'm going to do is right click and select edit in Photoshop. And then when it opens up into Photoshop, save that image. So we get a second JPEG to edit in Lightroom. Now with the second JPEG, we'll be focusing more on the colors and more fine tuning adjustments for light using the different gradient tool filters. Adding more detail into the image first off, um, as well as just fine tuning with the basics tab. Now, I'm not a fan of too much color and saturation, so I'm just going to bring the vibrance and saturation tabs down a bit. Here I get another radio tool and now I'm just adjusting for color. Uh, I want to have a sort of clean silver blue to the top right corner. So here are some of the adjustments that I do. Um, I just play around with various colors and I find one that I like. And I don't keep the saturation too high, just enough to give it that detail. Now I'm going to go into the brush tool to add in the skin color on my subject. Um, and while you're coloring, just press O to bring up where your brush edit is. Um, this is much easier and you can see that it's highlighted in red. And make sure you zoom in to um, really clean up your edit so it's nice and crisp. And first off, I'm just going to desaturate the blues all the way. Um, and you can see the skin color is appearing more natural, at least it's not um, super blue um, and now I'm going to add some color with the color tab to get it to a nice natural skin tone. You can see that now I'm in the temperature tab and I'm making it actually blue um, and that's to really help with the exposure of the skin. I don't want to make it too orange again um, otherwise it looked too obvious um, with the edit and yeah I just suggest playing around with the skin colors until you found something you like. With this brush, I'm just adding some clarity to the fish to give the photo a more dramatic lighting. Alright, hopping down into the HSL tab, um, this is where I start to fine tune my colors again. Um, I don't want this to be saturated, so I'm trying to go for a deep blue that isn't too obnoxious. Adding just minor split tones to give the image a little more pop and a more solid feel for the photo. Um, and once I find my split tones, I actually play with the balance and you can see here I just crank it all the way to the right um, because I really like that desaturated presence. One thing I like to do is just zoom in and out of the picture to make sure everything looks good. This helps with framing as well as anything that looks off from far away. Um, and I usually do this because on Instagram, if someone's looking at your feed, um, your photo is really small. So this is uh, just a helpful tip that I, I like doing. Now I'm going to recrop this image um, and actually adjust the angle to really keep um, a grid system in order with the image. Um, so my subject's leg was a little tilted, so I straightened the photo out. So his leg is extending horizontally instead of diagonally. Now onto a bit more gradient filters where I just play around with the exposures and color. Still trying to find that desaturated presence in the top right corner. Um, so you can see me playing around with something until I find something I like. Now onto some dodge and burning. Um, this is to give the photo a bit more contrast between the lights and dark. You can see I'm slightly bumping up the exposure for these rocks around my subject to give it a little bit more oomph and contrast. And I see that the top right corner is a bit unclear. So here I'm actually making the shadows more prominent within the image. 
Uh, this is a helpful step to do because you can further adjust these fine details with this brush tool to make the overall picture stand out well and to make it pop. I don't want all my shadows to be super dark so I added a second brush tool to just slightly bring down the shadows in other parts of the image as well. Here are the final adjustments with the tone curve to make the whole image just stand out um, and bring it all together. Now. Uh, just a fair warning, don't play too much with the shadows and darks now because you can see that some areas just lose some detail. They'll start to gray out. Um, so just be careful with that when you're editing a lot of these low, low res uh, JPEGs. They don't have a lot of data, so you have to be careful around that. Um, and I, I just bring down the highlights just a bit because I still want to have some detail in the lighted areas. Now again, I'm going back to the brush tool to make minor adjustments on my subject. Here, his fin was um, a bit too out of place, so I matched the exposure with my subject's right fin. And I'm also fine tuning my brush for the skin to make sure that nothing but his skin is colored. Um, and this is where, you know, you get really tedious um, depending on how, how you like it. Oh yeah, so here's one of my original edits I did, which I posted to Twitter, um, and you guys asked for this video, so here it is. Um, but it's cool because you can see that the style changed a lot. Um, and I think that's really the beauty about editing and re-editing a picture. You know, there, there's so many styles you can choose from. So just find what you like through practicing on the same photo. Now I'm just making sure that the color of his swim shorts are the same color. Um, sometimes my friends have like red or, or green swim shorts and I like to um, be authentic with those colors um, but thankfully these swim shorts were just blue um, and now I'm just looking for any more fine tuning opportunities. Here I re-emphasize that partial vignetting shape um, by just rounding out the curve of the shadows. Alright so here's the original image. Now here's the first edit where we focused on the light and creative direction. And finally the final product. Alright, so in the end I just want to remind you guys just to have fun with these images. Um, it's quite amazing how far you can push these old murky JPEGs and honestly I just use that as a challenge um, for me when I'm stuck editing and I, I'm just like not inspired. I, I try to really force myself into editing a JPEG. Um, so just remember, don't be limited by your equipment. Alright guys, if you like this video and want to see more, don't forget to share a like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and comment down below what tutorials you would like to see next, or any questions you may have regarding this video. I'll see you guys next time.